Welcome to Mrs. McLean Makes. <laughs> this episode, we are going to be making elderflower champagne. Today, I am in southwest London. Elderflowers grow all over the place. You don't need to be in the countryside, you can be anywhere you like. Even grows by the side of the roads and train tracks. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go elderflower picking. So I'm going to walk around the park and I'm going to find some really nice elderflower trees. All you need to do is bring a plastic bag and yourself. So let's go. So first elderflower tree. As you can see, some of the elderflower is turning brown. That's because it's a bit late in the season and really ideally we'd like to pick them earlier but it's been raining. And you want to make sure you get the best elderflower when it's been sunny. So you need the sunshine, that's when to pick them. Elderflowers are amazing. You can make so many different things using these tiny, delicious sweet petals. What, what you can do is you can make elderflower fritters. So you bash them around, then you fry them in um, batter, and they taste delicious and sweet and crunchy. You can also make elderberry wine, which I'm going to do another episode and show you how to make that, because it's absolutely delicious. You can also use the wood. It's really good for to making fires. So it's really, really handy if you're um, out camping, like my husband and I do quite a bit, then we'll use the wood as our um, fire burning wood. These look delicious. Let's pick some of these. See, these other flowers that I picked are absolutely perfect. So you can see it still has the yellow pollen on it. There's no brown, dead leaves there. It's absolutely beautiful. That is what we're looking for. Also, it's worth bearing in mind when you're around nature, using it for inspiration of how you could use it in other creative areas. So for me, I would use these petals. They're such a gorgeous geometric shape when you look at them so closely that I could include them in a textiles print. Look at those lovely elderflowers. Absolutely beautiful. Right next to the elderflower tree we've got all this absolutely gorgeous, very sweet cow parsley. You could pick some and take it home to put in with some flowers as a decoration. In fact, I might do that. Got our elderflowers picked, cow parsley to put on the table. Let's go home and prepare the elderflower flowers for making the champagne. Okay, so I'm back home now and I am here with my picked out a flower, the bucket full of water. So at home all you need is a normal bucket, any bucket you like, I've got a specific brewing bucket. Okay, so I fill the bucket up with water to about here which is roughly about 12 litres of tap water. I'm just going to simply pour them into the water, every single one of them. Don't worry about the bugs going in there, that's fine, they'll die and we'll pull them out at a later stage. We've got our elderflowers in the water and now what we need to do is add the lemon and the sugar. So we need to take four lemons and a kilo and a half of sugar. Yeah, a lot of sugar, but it tastes so good. So four lemons. We are going to zest and um, squeeze them. Here comes the really exciting part. We are adding sugar to the elderflower. This is exciting because it turns it alcoholic. We add sugar to the mixture because the natural yeasts on the elderflower eat the sugar, which in turn gives off carbon dioxide, which makes it fizzy, and also gives off alcohol, which we love. A kilo and a half of sugar goes in. Give the elderflowers a really good stir. Cover the mixture with some clean muslin and leave it for a couple of days. Two days later and my elderflower champagne should hopefully be ready to bottle. So what we need to do before we do that is make sure that the elderflower champagne has started to bubble. So you can check this by lifting up the muslin and making sure that underneath the water within the elderflowers there's lots of tiny little bubbles. If it doesn't have that, all you need to do is buy some champagne yeast, 
pop it in there and that will get the process going quickly for you. So now we've cleaned the plastic bottles. What you might want to do is add some steriliser when you're cleaning the bottles just to make sure everything has gone and it's really, really, really clean. Next thing we need to do is we are going to strain all of the elderflowers and the liquid into the bottles through a sieve and through muslin. I'm not sure I'm strong enough to lift this whole bucket, so I'm going to ask Mr. McLean to help me. Okay, thanks to Mr. McLean, I now have my champagne bottled. Make sure you use really strong plastic bottles, not glass bottles, because they will explode and you do not want glass everywhere. Once you have the elderflower bottled, you need to screw the lids on, but make sure the lids are only screwed on really gently. This is so that air can come out throughout the process of it brewing. After a week and a half of your elderflower brewing, you want to tighten up lids so the air stops coming out. This will make it really, really fizzy and just like champagne. Be careful. If the bottles look like they're becoming too distended, just loosen the lids off a little bit and let some more air out. You do not want an elderflower champagne explosion all over your house. After three weeks of waiting for my elderflower champagne to brew, it's finally ready and I can have my very first sip. That's really 